Hey, if you follow me on Instagram or if you've ever been to my webpage, uh, you might notice that I post a personal diary comic on there almost every day, most of the days, and it's about my life and things that I go through. And I started that back in 2017. And each year I put it together into a collected book. Well, this year's no different because I have a brand new book out and it's in ebook and paperback and it's called Going Outside Again. It's a collected issue of all of my comics, which I titled Then This Happened because each day something happens and I write about it. It's even more fun and oddly makes weird sense when you read them one right after the other in the book or in the ebook. So right now you can go to my website, tomraiswebsite.com slash book five. That's tomraiswebsite.com slash book and the number five. And you can see the new issue and actually check out a few preview pages. That's tomraiswebsite.com slash book five. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Tom Ray's Art Podcast. I'm Tom. On today's episode, I meet a cartoonist who, for some reason, when we started out, like as we were beginning the call before we started recording, I thought they lived in like another state. And it turns out they only <laughs> live like an hour and a half away from me. That's not important to the conversation, just something that occurred. So uh, they're a cartoonist who does a comic called Mr. Hughes History. I've been following them online for, uh, on Instagram for quite a while. I'm not entirely sure how we connected or when I began following them, but uh, I, I just wanted to talk to them. It's a very weird comic strip. Weird in the sense that not because it's about history, but because it's narrated by an octopus. And the person's drawing style isn't necessarily what you would think for a history comic. It's kind of a little abstract, but it's still comic book, comic strip-like. It's it's a very cool comic, and uh, the, I didn't know much about the person because they uh, they don't have a website. They they just released a new book, so I get to find out along with you more about this person as we have our conversation. So it was a great time, and here's the interview starting right now. I'm Drew Sternitsky. I'm the uh, creator of the comic strip, Mr. Hughes History. How long have you been doing that? I follow your uh, Mr. Hughes History comic on Instagram. And uh, I'm curious, how long have you been doing that for? Then I think he turns, he turns four next month. So other than a few little pauses, it's been almost four years of, okay. of once a week strips. Yeah. All right. So like in dog years, that's why he's Mr. Uh, he's, he's old enough to be considered an adult. So that's Mr. Hughes history. Yeah. And he's an octopus. So no, there's no octopus that lives four years. So he's kind of an anomaly. That, that's kind of a long lifespan for an octopus. So. Okay. All right. What, wait, what is the life? I guess I've never thought about that. What is the lifespan for an octopus? Yeah. The oldest octopus might live maybe four years, three to four years. The giant Pacific octopus can live. The really? Only live a year or two. Yeah, they they live fast and they die young. Yeah, I didn't mm -hmm. know that. For some reason, I just assumed it's like tortoises, where it's like I don't know, they live for like 150 years or something like that. No, no. Oh. a lot of intelligence is packed into a tiny short life. Right? Weird. Pretty, yeah. I <laughs> I don't know. Why. I've never known that. For some reason, it's kind of blown my mind right now. Yeah. For longevity's sake, I don't know why I picked an octopus for this strip. <laughs> yeah. Well, first of all, okay, before we get into the strip and explaining what it is, because it's a very odd strip, and I actually want to I want to get more of your, your perspective on it, because I only know what I know about it, and yeah. I could just be like, I see it when I see it, because you only post it on Instagram, so you never know yeah. when you actually... <laughs> you never know when you actually see the one that's out or you're seeing one from a week ago and there's actually a new one out. Like last night I posted a new comic and people were still commenting on one from like a week ago. And I'm like, I've done five comics since this. So I don't I've know, noticed, you know, I've noticed that where you, you talk about something about the weather. I was like, well, the weather was nothing like that yesterday. Like, <laughs> yeah. That so one cool. in particular, even that yeah. one for some reason started getting viewed like days after the fact. Um, <laughs> So things like that. But one, um, I for some reason thought you were in Colorado, but when we were starting this call, you said you're like right outside of Milwaukee. So you're I located am. there. Where Whereabouts are you located? I, I'm in Elm Grove, which is just outside the Milwaukee County line, just about for about a 10 minute drive downtown from where I am. Okay. So yeah. why did I think you were in Colorado? Was that, Were you tied know. to Colorado at any point in your life? 
I have a brother who lives in Colorado. Okay, maybe that's it. So when I was searching, when I was searching for you, so that's Jay. That is Jay. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. So there you. Here's all right. Here we go. Now we're even getting back further. So did you guys used to do a comic together? We did we did? It's, it's yeah. I should really start it again. It's, uh, <laughs> it was called Short Stack: Tales of a Superhuman Plumber. Okay. And uh, he he was the writer, and I was the uh, I was the artist. Okay. Um, we had done like I think eight eight or so issues of that, and uh, that I all hand hand drawn, hand watercolored. They took a really long time, but it was kind of cool. It, had, it was really cool premise behind the whole project where the art would really degenerate until like the last issues were just abstract comics with words. Um, yeah. We I haven't gotten that point yet, but maybe this is a good a good reason to get started again now that I've been talking about it. But yeah, so that's how you found me. You found, you found short stack, which was the, uh, which was the first comic project I ever worked on. So what was the rise and fall of that? Like, why did it, why did it stop? I mean, people start a comic project because they're like, I want to make comics. And then you realize what making comics is like, and then you stop. Yeah. So how did that happen? <laughs> yeah. Well, he, he, st he was always been into comics and we collected comics as a kid and as kids. And, I had kind of gotten away from it and he started writing again. And then he asked me if I wanted to do it and to, to draw his story. And I said, sure. But like, I had come from a fine arts background and I said, well, I kind of, I, but I want to draw it kind of like how I normally draw. I don't want to, you know, draw like a superhero comic. Right. And he said, it's fine. He was totally uh, along, went along with it. And, um, it, it, uh, I had a, I had a really bad bicycling accident. I got run over by, I got run over by a little old lady on my bicycle <laughs> and was in the hospital for a while and broke my neck and my, in my, my, my arm. And I was in the hospital for a week and wow. I, don't know, I came out and I don't know, I started working on some other stuff and a couple other things happened and I kind of lost the thread on that. And, um, but it's sitting there. I came across the pages that I had where I stopped. I had inked the pages and I was like, you know, maybe I should get started on this again. But so it was kind of like life just kind of gave me like a curveball and I kind of pivoted and and I'm probably sure that he's saddened by it, but I never I haven't gotten back there yet. OK, and so I started running around on my with ideas that I had, but it was kind of a kind of a weird time where I kind of just started making some stuff that was that I, I had some idea after that whole experience. I had some ideas about life and things I wanted to communicate. And so I just started writing and I started drawing and I started going. So what did you pivot to? I pivoted to this really uh, very personal, almost cryptic series of 80, 88 strips that make up a, a, a comic comic strips that make up a complete story, which no one can follow. It's completely uh, bonkers. Um, but what it did have is a little octopus in there who was kind of the narrator. Okay. And the little octopus that I did in that kind of series of strips, the 88 strips that told a story, would he'd eventually become Mr. Hugh. So, but that that's one half of the story of how I got to Hugh. So, right. Well, um, what was the what was the point behind 88 strips? Was that the plan? Was this like some sort of abstract uh like building block to a point? Like 88 is a well, kind of a unique number to to it use. Was. Well, it was it was it was three three people's stories that intertwined. It was kind of like some sort of like, you know, a uh, Magnolia movie situation where these, all these stories intertwined and came together. And so it was, it was a bro two, bro it was a brothers and then a husband and a wife and then two friends whose stories seemed different. And then eventually they all came together. And the one thing that I had in there is it was all, the characters were never met face to face. They were all, uh, it was all through different forms of social media. So you never saw the two people in the same room together. They only communicated by, you know, or, or text or phone or FaceTime or, you know, so. Okay. And that was the project that I came out of that act, that pretty severe accident. I came out making that project. And then. What was the theme it, of it? Like, was it, uh, you know, was it horror, comedy, romance? Like what just, was. Just kind of like a disconnect. Like the people never really connected. Like mm -hmm. it was this series of misconnections. Okay. And, uh, yeah, I don't know that. You don't know. Well, you were drawing it. What's you tell? Me? I'm just kidding. Well, I get that people, though. Most people who read it kind of just go, "Oh, this is very interesting." Is but it? Well, there I think it was so the, the the symbolism and all the things I put into it were so incredibly personal. Yeah, that like it's impossible for anyone to kind of get what I'm talking about. 
And I look at it now, years later, and go, oh, my gosh, I can't believe I expected someone to understand what I was writing about here. Yeah. Well, no, and I get that. And I I mean, I I was joking before, but it's like I, I've done that where it's like I have an idea and I think uh-huh. it could lead up to something. And it's kind of like, you know what? It, it, do it like life. Like uh, you start it and let's see how this plays out. You know, maybe it will find its path. But it's like in the meantime, you're doing something and truthfully it's and maybe even like you were saying looking back on it it becomes something where it's like wow what the the hell am (laughs) i even thinking you know but but that's also kind of cool sometimes where it's like that just seems like you're messed up it's like it's like you're trying to be david lynch but it's really like no i i just didn't remember what i did the time before or what i was going to do next (laughs) which truthfully i feel like that's what his movies are like sometimes i know that's it it's it's very much it has that feel to it where there's like you kind of get a thread and you go, no, now I don't understand again. Yeah. And I do know that I had a tremendous, I love doing it. I had a tremendous amount of fun making it because I was just, there was no restrictions. I just like let it rip. Yeah. And there is something freeing about that. Well, um, and just let it rip. the reason I asked too, is because when you said the octopus was the narrator, uh, my mind instantly went to like those old, uh, like Boris Karloff, like four color gold star, or gold key uh, comics where he would just narrate one story and then it would just be a regular horror story, but they'd be short stories. And in between the introduction would be a drawing of Boris Karloff going like, Ooh, spooky story. And then it would just be a regular story. And then the narrator would come. And I was wondering if that's what, why I think I even, the first one I asked was, was it a horror comic? You know? Um, And that's, that's why I asked. So uh, now with your drawing style and when you did the comics with your brother that I'd found, I actually found a couple of pictures of them. Uh, they were posted online. You used to have a website, which by the way says now is malware. Um, if you try to go to it, like you get a big red screen that goes, this, this is a deceptive site you're going to. Um, just, just, I don't, I mean, you probably just let it lapse and never touched it again. And that's what happens to sites that you do that with people buy the domain and try to, you know, put gambling sites on it. Um, but uh, the drawing style that was in it, it reminded me very much of old uh, when DC used to have the Vertigo uh, uh, s- section of comics where they were they were kind of like the indie creators. They weren't superheroes. Yeah. They could have supernatural elements to them, but most of them were kind of psychological. And that's what the drawings kind of reminded me of. Even the color palette you used kind of reminded me of that. It was kind of like yeah. a bluish purplish sort of, you know, it, it, it was like pastel, but it was like dark pastel. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's, a good, That's a good description. Dark pastel. So what, what is your, uh, like, how did you get started uh, making art? What were your influences and some of the experiences you had starting out? Yeah, I, you know, I, I went, I, I had a fine arts degree. I got in at, uh, I went to a small liberal arts school outside of, uh, outside of Milwaukee here, Carroll, Carroll University. Oh, now. okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, I, well, I, you know, fine arts major. I, you know, I really, you know, went through all kinds of influences from Francis Bacon to, uh, uh, Miro to, you know, obviously people like Picasso, but, you know, I, I really, the, the big turn came, you know, I, I did a lot of, I did fine art stuff. I had a little, I had some show, a little show in New York for a minute. And then we had kids and um, I stayed home and raised kids hmm. and then also homeschooled them for 17 years. Um, in the meantime, in the interim, you know, maybe doing this little comic with my brother, but also always doing my drawing at night, you know, in the wee hours of the morning, scribbling stuff, painting stuff. Art was always kind of part of my life, but for but for 17 years there, 16 years, it was I, I was a full time teacher, and that that was the, that's the other half of Mr. Hugh, um, okay. Where all the all the varied uh, literature and science and whatever, it's all it kind of was all born. I think a lot out of those years of homeschooling uh, my kids. Okay. Now, how so? Getting to that, like, how would you explain? Now the, like, what would be your pitch for, uh, Mr. Hughes? Uh, how would you describe it? Cause as you said, it's an octopus, but it's also history. (laughs) It's teaching, you know, like what would you, cause when you look at it, it's not like, Hey kids, science, you know, it's not that kind of comic. It's, it's, you know, right. How would you describe it? Well, I started out when I, when I first started the comic, I did, um, it was, it matched the week that I put it out. So, 
like whatever happened that week, it was like this week in history kind of idea yeah. where I would look at the head and I'd find a story that either I thought in some way related to things going on now or, um, or that I personally just enjoyed writing about. And I would pick that up and then I would have Mr. Hugh go ahead and tell a little about something. I thought, and I thought the format was quite interesting to be a comic strip size. You know, people, the attention spans have been shrinking. So I thought, well, I can't get someone to read a book about Don Quixote. I can't get them to read Don Quixote, mm-hmm. but maybe I can get them to read a strip about Don Quixote, which might get them curious about it and maybe consider picking it up. I mean, that's one, but whether it's history or literature or art or whatever, my idea was to kind of give like enough that maybe people might get interested in these ideas again and kind of present ideas to people. And I was surprised how many times people would uh, do deep dives of their own based on a strip that I had started. Like I never knew about that. And uh, after you posted that, I, you know, I went in and like looked all, looked that up or so. Yeah. Yeah. I do do that quite a bit, but it's always something to do with uh, some random vintage thing that I saw like the other day. (laughs) For example, I've been watching Laverne and Shirley and one day I'm like, wait a minute, is that Miss Yvonne from Pee Wee's Playhouse? (laughs) <laughs> and she was an extra on one of the shows. So I was like, I looked it up to see if Miss Yvonne was on it, which Miss Yvonne nowadays is Charlie's mom on Always Sunny in Philadelphia. <laughs> and uh, I looked it up. And actually what happens is, is in the fifth season, Squiggy gets, or sixth season, Squiggy gets a girlfriend and they bring Miss Yvonne back as another character. And she plays Squiggy's girlfriend. And she actually gets a bit part on the series, much like how Squiggy has a bit part on the series. But then later on, when they do the Laverne and Shirley cartoon, which was a a block of like Happy Days, Laverne and Shirley and the Fonz got their own cartoon. uh, uh, Shirley voiced the character for one season. And then the second season, she decided not to do it and was replaced by the character that plays Miss Vaughn, which I wish I could remember her actual name right now instead of saying Miss Yvonne. But anyway... That I discovered all over a period of 20 minutes, uh, just looking up if that was her on an episode of Laverne and Shirley. So I get what you're saying, because that's the type yeah. of stuff I do right there. Um, that would make that those type of things, I think, would make a great book <laughs> where you had some sort of I don't know if you ever saw David Byrne made this book of kind of like flow charts. Almost he made. No, a, I oh, not what it's called. They're kind of like a little branching like info, almost infographics, but like what you're describing would be a fantastic book. Like, <laughs> like you start off with the, like what you said, and then you do the little branch off right. and it keeps going off. I'd, I'd read that book. Yeah. No. And I've, believe me, it's something I've, I've considered, but at the same time, it's like, I never know when, I mean, I know what I know and I'm, uh, it's hard to go. Do I seek it out? What do I already know? Uh, the facts that I've actually studied uh, pop into my head when it's relevant, relevant. Nobody wants to hear it when I say it, but, uh, but what I mean is I, all of a sudden it'll be like, Oh yeah, I did this. Uh, or I looked this up and then it'll, pop, cause if I were to try to sit down and go like, okay, what do I know? You get nothing from this brain right here. I don't, I don't know anything. So, uh, but if I have to apply it to something, it has to be relatable anyway. Um, <laughs> so getting back to why is it a octopus? Why did you decide to take the octopus from the one comic, like you were saying before, and make this the central character that was Mr. Hughes' history. Right. Um, well, I've always, I've always like, I've always like octopuses. That's one, one reason. Is it why. octopuses or octopi? No, it's octopuses. Okay, it yeah. seems wrong now when when people say it. I know, I know. <laughs> but octopi sounds silly too. It does. Yeah. So okay. it's octopuses, but um, I've always, and then they're all obviously the. The highly intelligent, but from a completely different, you know, uh, how we, you know, how we got the humans and octopuses intelligence are, they diverged way back in the, uh, in the evolutionary tree back okay. when you had little tiny, but yet they're incredibly intelligent. And I wanted a narrator who wasn't a person. Like I wanted someone who was, you know, nonpartisan, if you will. He was not, <laughs> he could not be tied to any sort of allegiance to something in, in the human world. So yeah. Mr. Hugh was, uh, he was my solution. He was the, he just naturally fell into place. Okay. And yeah. now when you start a project like this, first of all, uh, much like what I said is it's like, how do you decide what you're going to look up? Like with the story, like I'm going to do a deep dive on this 
And then of course the drawing it and laying it out. So what is your process for when you start a project and like, how do you execute it? Yeah, thanks. That's a good question. Um, so it's a bit, it, it's kind of streamlined. I was kind of all over the place at the beginning, but I have, I've, I've accumulated a source of, you know, a bunch of websites that give me like this day in history. So that's where I start a week yeah. ahead of time. I'll start this, but I've also found that you need to double, you need to double check all your dates because I've gotten a couple of sites that the dates have been wrong. So you got to, when right. you have to find it on more than one site before you just go with the, the go with yeah, the Yeah, there's date. no proofreader on the internet. No, 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 no. <laughs> so if I find the same date in three and four places, I feel confident enough to go, okay, yeah. I'm going to proceed with this date. And then it's just a matter of doing my homework. It's like, it's like I'm back to school. I don't have, you know, some of these things I know a little bit about from my own personal interest, but a lot of them I, I'm interested based on what the little description is. And then I go into reading and I go, I go to, I'll even go old school. I'll go to the library. Mm -hmm. I'll listen to podcasts about the things and take notes. And then like, I've, it ends up having like pages of notes. And then I have to, <laughs> I have to whittle that down to, you know, try to get that down to something that fits in a comic strip is, is a little, is a little tough, but yeah, I really enjoy the whole process is because I'm learning the whole time too. I'm, I, I find something that catches my eye and then I, I go on a deep dive every week mm -hmm. about a topic. And it's usually, there's usually there's something in it. There's a reason why it grabbed me. And there's a reason why it, it snagged, it snagged my attention. And, and sometimes I try to bring it back to the modern, to, to the modern world, which I think is one of the great things about history is that we can, we can bring these things back. You know, oftentimes we have a tendency to kind of, kind of want to like, forget the past or we want to judge the past, but mm -hmm. I'm all about trying to understand the past to try to kind of like, yes, things, things, not everything was perfect, mm -hmm. but we need to salvage some stuff. You know, I always, you know, I always, I always think of history as kind of like our project as, as, as people. And I was always thinking about that quote from, from what Apollo 13, when the, when the crew is stranded up there on the, uh, in the, in the, uh, up in space and they, and they ask the crew up there, they say, you know, what on the spacecraft is good? And that's kind of like how I feel like Mr. Hugh is like trying to find like us as a people, like as a species, like what's good? What on the spacecraft is good? Yeah. Mr. Hughes can try to maybe bring some of these ideas. Um, may maybe he kind of sheds some light on some neg negative things, too. But like what what can we be inspired by? Like and um, what, what about us is good? Not so much about we know what we should know about the things that were bad. We know mm -hmm. those things, but let's, let's try to salvage what we can here and move forward. That's kind of my. <laughs> yeah. And well, when you get all this information, how do you break it down for the comic? So uh, at some point you're getting loads and loads of information. That's probably pages, <laughs> paragraphs, all this kind of stuff. You can't just repurpose that and then put some drawings above them. So I, and, and you don't. So how do you break it down into I guess a, a comic form. What? How do you break? Is there a set number of pages that or panels that you'll do, or do you kind of, you know, it, it does that alternate? But so, what's the process for actually taking this information and breaking it down into bite-sized pieces? I guess would be the way to put it. Yeah, it just I I'll just you know constantly whittle it down. Like that's not important. That's not important. And then based on what I have, what the information I want to talk about, then it's like, well, how can I, how can I enhance that with the, with the images? And, you know, it's, it, it, it is always like ends up being like one tenth of what I originally wrote for like the first draft of the strip. It's always much, I could have written so much more, but I have to kind of whittle it down. And even then I've had people say like, huh, I'd like to read that strip, but it's like a lot of reading in that thing. Yeah. I was, yeah. I was like, I, it's a lot of reading for a comic strip. Right. But it's not, it's not like, it's not a lot of reading as, as in like life. So no, even um, when they used to have those condensed classics, the, uh, you know, the comic book versions of classic books that you could read. Yeah. yeah. Even though as I'd get those, I'd get halfway through and I'd be like, no, this is effort. <laughs> yeah. even though they're I pictures picked up, i picked up some like you know some marvel stuff from the 80s and early 90s when i was getting comic books and there's like there's a ton of dialogue in there yeah it's yeah like, they were like borderline yeah they were borderline the in-between matches of wrestling uh type things where it's like are you guys gonna talk all day 
Somebody throw a chair. <laughs> right. It's like you only have like this much of the guy's head in the panel because you because it's all words. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, and, and when you're doing these, is it a mixture of like, is it thumbnailing with text and pictures or are you writing the stuff? Like, how are you going about it? Cause yeah, it's real easy it, to copy yeah. and paste and write like with text, but the, yeah, no, I, I write and then I find a place where I want to pause. And so I'll do all the writing first and then however I break it up, then I kind of compose the artwork around what I've written. Okay. Um, and then, then that kind of breaks it up. So then you have some bigger panels, some smaller panels, you know, whether it's six panels, three panels, four panels, or one panel, like, or just, yeah, that's how I tend to do, how I tend to do that part. Okay. It's, uh, it depends on what I've written. I have to start writing first and then that, that determines what I, what I draw. All right. And then from that point, like at what format as in the original artwork that you do, are you writing them or are you drawing them by hand? Or are you using a tablet? Are you like what? It's all by, it's all by hand. I'm so, you know, okay. I'm, I'm so not, not terribly technological literate. There's nothing wrong with that. I love how people try to apologize for the fact that they just like to draw the way they like to draw. It's like, if you draw by hand, go for it. Why does yeah, everybody I, apologize for that? But I've read all your posts and seen your things about handling all these technological issues and in right. music, creating all the music digitally and i'm like i it's like i just i'm, I'm like that's I'm part like of the adventure game. for me mine is like trying oh. to figure out what i can get this stupid thing to do and then ai comes yeah. along and it's just like oh i just have to tell it to do it well that's no fun i need my stuff to break so i can complain about it and get at least two three strips out of it <laughs> <laughs> but but that's yeah so when you're drawing it like how big do you draw it and also how do you get it to transfer digitally onto uh instagram where you're posting it You'll be really impressed by this. Okay. So I, it's four. The I draw them four by thirteen. That's the original size. Nice. So okay. Four inches, thirteen inches long. Um, just with like regular micron pens, maybe rapidographs if I've run out of micron pens. Okay. Um, and I was posting them on Instagram via my iPhone. Yeah. All right. Taking pictures. Like just taking full on pictures, not adjusting them or anything. No, not really. really? I get the I get the lighting right in the dining room here on a nice cloudy day, and I'd set the strip out, and I'd you know okay. take shots and break it up. And um, I recently invested in a in a because four by thirteen it won't fit in like a regular scanner. Yeah. So I had to get a, but I've recently gotten a big flatbed scanner. So now I've upgraded my game, and now I'm scanning. Okay. Scanning. So. Yeah. Slowly but surely. <laughs> there was a trick for how you could do it and it but you'd have to stitch them together so you'd scan one half and then scan the other half on smaller ones and then you'd open yeah. both of them up in a in like a, a Photoshop or whatever the heck and you would take it and just kind of adjust them so that they'd go together. When you got good yeah. at it, it would take like maybe 5 minutes, but still it's 5 minutes of I mean you still have to scan it, import the pictures, then stitch them together, but you could do it with the lar like I was able to take big Bristol pads when I was doing like mini comics and I'd be able, I would scan the top half and then scan the bottom half and then right. just kind of, yeah, you stitch them together in the program used to do right. that. And then like you, it's like, Oh, I'll just, or I could just get one. That's the right size, you know, but sometimes <laughs> they you don't have that. The, yeah. The price, the price came down on the, on the big scanners. So that's because tough. scanners and printers have not changed in our lifetime ever. Like the, the only thing that's changed is they have those ink wells that you can just pour it into. Like, like otherwise they're all, all printers are exactly the same <laughs> and they all suck. <laughs> this is true. Yeah. I don't understand it. Everything else is advanced, got smaller, more efficient. And printers are just like here. It's the size of a old television set. It, they're um, so huge. Yeah. Unnecessarily so. <laughs> Anyway, sorry, off track there. So no. you, you you take the pictures. Now you got the scanners. So um, so with that, why did you choose that format if you were going to post it on Instagram? The the horizontal format, yeah, you mean like traditional because because I'm old because like, <laughs> I like well, and the reason I ask is I get some people are like, well, I can adjust it for Instagram because here's where I'm really using it. But it's like, no, you're just posting it on Instagram. So you chose yeah. your own format and said, no, this is yeah. how I do it. <laughs> That's which yeah. again is fine. That's, I mean, you make it work. I mean, I see it when you put there, but yeah. And you can, yeah, you can, you can chop it up so people of can course. 
through it. And yeah, I, yeah. So, but I just, I, you know, I, I was the, I was the kid and I'm assuming I'm, I'm around the same age you are and where I was, I, I would clip out, it was like a little, you know, living where I lived there, you know, we didn't go to the art museum every day. And mm -hmm. it was like those little strips were like little art. I, I cut them out and put them in notebooks and paste them in there, whatever one kind of, uh, whether it was, you know, Bloom County or, you right. know, I would all those a Garfield like I they were little tiny those little tiny things were just that it was like a little special thing and I would fill notebooks with them glued in there. Oh and so, really? Yeah, and so when the ones I like and so when I you know when I went to go make one of my own like that it felt like completely natural to make that strip even though people are like well you got to make the well much like yours where you make the rectangular with the four panels in it. Yeah. Um, but you know that's probably better, but I don't know. Yeah, I like <laughs> right, it's better. For Mine literally was for size. Like I know that I knew that I wanted to also make it into a book, but I still needed it to be as uh, tall as it could be, but still fit on Instagram. Because if you go right. if you go a little bit taller than mine do, it gets cropped off. And I found that uh -huh. through trial and error. So that's why it's kind of a tall rectangle, but it's not. But also with the size that I do it. Um, since it's one of the taller sizes, it also makes it appear bigger on Instagram than other posts. So it's a, it'll take up way more space because it's allowing that tall of a size. So it's also kind of a play on, uh, Hey, look here, because here's a bigger picture than the other ones you're looking at. And then they started doing reels and reels are all tall format. So it kind yeah. of ruined my standing, <laughs> out. but that's okay. Um, and, uh, yeah, the, the, uh, one thing I want to know too is speaking of making it into books, you just recently made a book. So how did you make your latest book? And also with the look of your book, when I saw it, it reminded me of this vintage book that I just got here by Virgil Parch. And it's oh very my. similar in style to what yours is. Oh it's sideways. It's got the, it's got the only black yours is a bottom one, but it's like got the black square with text on it. So we can show everyone here. Yeah. yeah. They're very similar in style. I thought that was kind of funny when I saw it. This one's from like 1963 or something like that. So that's amazing. Well, so that's good. <laughs> if it comes down to it, he beat you. Um, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so how did you uh, how did you make your latest book? Yeah, well, you know, I'd hoped to. You know, I had tried to find a home for him, a publisher. Um, but I wasn't having the, the kind of the constellated nature of the, the strips all over the place, you know, literature, science, history, environmental science, like all over the it, publishers were scared that it didn't have a through line. Like it wasn't about something or it oh, okay. didn't have like, a common, it was too, each one was different, which to me was kind of the attractiveness of doing it. And at some point I just said, you know, there was enough people who had mentioned that they would like to see these not on Instagram. Hmm. They'd like to see them. They'd like to like leaf through them. And so I decided to kind of, and I, again, again, I had never laid out a book or anything like that. So I had to kind of get myself up to speed on that. And I, I just uh, tried to find some printers online, uh, printers locally. I really wanted to maybe try to find someone locally who could help me, but the mm -hmm. size restrictions were a problem. I wanted to try to make it as close to the original as I could, but that four by 13 size was really difficult to get printed digitally. Okay. It would, they'd have to do a traditional like offset press. And then, then I was going to charge people $75 for essentially a magazine. Right. So like you really got to be into Mr. Hugh if, if you're paying $75 for a giant life magazine. Yeah. So, um, no. So I, I, I managed to put it together and I uploaded it to just like an online printer and, and, printed a copy out, took a look at it. And it looked, I was shocked like how well it turned out. It turned, I didn't, I had low expectations for like a digital printing kind of on, you know, just like, you know, where you, you upload the file and four days later I had a book and I oh. was like, well, this can't be good because this is four days later. Like it can't, but it looks great. And the, the strips in the book are pretty darn close to what the original they're not quite as big as I wanted them to do because that size was a problem, but they're about 80, 85% of the original four by 13 size. So, um, they look cool, really cool. The original size. Yeah. Um, I still think they look really nice in the book. So I was really happy with how it turned out. So where did you end up happy. printing it at? Uh, it was Lulu. Oh, you did go through Lulu. Okay. I went through Lulu. Yeah. 
I got a recommendation from a couple people who I follow on Instagram who they really were happy with their results that they had. And they had some really intricate black and white line work as well that I follow. Yeah. And um, they were happy with how that black and white and I and I tar- and I point I contacted them in particular because I wanted, you know, how did they do with your line work and it turned out well. So I went with them and it was pretty, pretty easy, pretty painless so far. So Okay. Now with the, uh, with you only posting on Instagram and not having a website and all that kind of stuff, what is your plan for promoting and selling this book? And what what do you plan to do with it? Like I made a book, which is perfectly fine. Like it's great to make a book and you can, and you don't have to do anything with it if you don't want to. I'm, but I'm curious, like, what would you like to do with it? Yeah. Well, this is the thing. This is kind of the, it may, I thought it might be the fire that gets me moving in different Ah. directions. I know I need to get, I know I should have a website. Have a baby to save the marriage is what you're saying. That's exactly what I did. (laughs) Okay. Let's get get a warehouse of books in here because that'll really get me going. Okay. No, it wasn't a warehouse, but it was, it was enough that I'm like, I got to get rid of these books. You know, I I got to, you know, I've had a pretty, pretty decent response on Instagram for Instagram. You know, people always say, well, Instagram, you're not going to get. But, you know, I, I, I've made it, I've put it up there for almost four years. So I've had people on there for four years who have been commenting and watching and, you know, occasionally asking for a collection. But yeah, the next steps I think are, you know, website. Um, geez, I hate to go, I hate to do more social media, but I, I'm just not, I'm just not in, I just can't, I don't know. I've had really great experience on Instagram. Like everyone has been so it's, I've never had really a lot of negative comments, even though there's some subjects I touch upon where there's been room for someone to come in and kind of um, make a comment. But it's mm-hmm. all been so positive. And it's partly the way I, I think I write it. I don't I'm not trying to I'm not being polemic in my in my views. I'm, but they're just a topic sometimes would would warrant someone out there to say something. But it hasn't been it's been very positive on Instagram. And so I'm like, I like it. <laughs> It's like, I like it here. Everyone is, has been good. Like, uh, I don't want to, you know, you got to put it on Twitter. I'm like, I'm not taking it to Twitter. Yeah, no. And you know, and there's no need to, if you don't feel comfortable there, that is something that I always struggle with too, is it's, I mean, I'm on one because of my former job, I had to seek out, learn and figure out the ins and outs of all these different social networks and how they could interact with, uh, websites and businesses. That's what I right. had to do. So I'm pretty much uh, like when something comes out, I even just by reflex, I'm like, oh, create an account, see what it does. Um, I don't use them all. I, I, I use a lot of them, but uh, I know there are ones that I spend more time on. Uh, Instagram being one of them. And and uh, it, there's nothing wrong with, I mean, that's your forte. That's in going out and finding an audience and going like, hey guys, I'm really popular over here. Maybe you'll like me here too. It can be a benefit, but you know, if you don't want to do it, I, I don't feel the pressure to do it. I don't think, you know, you need to worry about it. You're finding this, you're, you're finding something that you're going, this is good. And there's no reason not to just try to expand on that platform. It's not bad to make a website. I could say, and this is just a suggestion. Well, one, do you, would you be putting it out also as an ebook or like a PDF download or anything like that? Hmm. I hadn't thought about it because. Huh. Because I thought that was too much like Instagram or like the benefit of having it like something you could pick up in your hand and kind of put on the table. Yeah. And I've had people say like, you know, I read, you know, I read a couple a day or whatever. And, you know, they're not maybe going to do that on there. But that's I mean, but that's an assumption, too. You never know. I mean, it doesn't cost much to do that. It doesn't cost. I mean, to, to make it an ebook is not, right. And, right. and there's no, there's no, like, as you said before, warehouse, it's like one file that gets downloaded over and over again. And the reason I ask is, is because there are different ways. And it's also like, uh, I'm thinking of an actual proof to my thought as I was expanding onto the next thought, but I'm going to go back. So it's kind of like with me, uh, I could just release my stuff on Bandcamp because all musicians are like, they don't pay you enough for streaming. And it's like, okay, fine. You're getting paid something though. So that's more than any other platform. But regardless, they're like, so I'm going to boycott Spotify. And it's like, oh, so all you're doing is ostracizing the people that prefer to listen to music on Spotify and they have a subscription and now your music's not on there. So they're not going to listen to it. So I put my stuff on all the platforms because I'm not going to, you know, cut off people for this is the way they like to listen to their music. 
That's, right. you know, I'll, uh, I'll like, I would like to help them out with the way they like to do it and enjoy my stuff instead of going, Oh, you mean I have to sign up for this thing? Ugh, I'll do it later. And I say, ugh, as in the sense, like everybody's just like, I want to help, but I don't want to do it right now. I'll do it later. You know, and that's, and we all know how that goes. <laughs> Every one of us are guilty of that. And that's the reason I say like having an ebook also is just like some people like to just sit and flip through it and mm -hmm. maybe they don't. And you'll find that out if you make one and it doesn't take that long of an effort. And I'm not scolding you. I'm just bringing it up like, you know, uh, the, 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 uh, you never know how people like to enjoy their comics. Uh, there were people that hated comiXology and I loved it uh, when it was in its heyday, you know, reading yeah. comics on my phone. That was fabulous to me. I'm like, well, I don't have to carry them all with me to make sure I have them. If I feel like reading one, it's, it's was just like with the iPod. I can carry all my songs with me. Hell yeah. Um, right. But uh, now the reason I ask is because what you can do, and this is a really quick way for you to start a website. And like right now, I know you're saying DM me for the book on your Instagram page. There's a, it much like that service that a lot of people have, like a uh, link in bio or whatever the other one is. Um, there's one called Koji right now. That's really popular. And it actually has apps inside of it. So you can have people like you can actually create the link in your Instagram bio to this. And it's a web page where it's like, click here to buy the book. And it, you know, you people will buy the book and you'll get the shipping information and you can send it to them or click here to buy the ebook and they can download it. So, and it's a real fast way for you when you're going and then I soon got to get the website. Well, we all know how that goes. That's going to be like a year in the process of, of getting it set up or designing it or how do I get this there? So mm -hmm. just uh, that's why I bring that up is uh, it's so if you go to with Koji, I think the uh, website is with Koji.com and just check it out and see if it works for you. But it gives you the option to actually let people buy the book from you instead of having to DM you and you working yeah. out the details. And that's yeah. a, it's no, a quick little website. No, that's a great tip. Thank you. Yeah. So that was a long winded way for me to say, Hey, you oh. should try out Koji. Jesus, Tom. <laughs> so, um, why did you decide to start showing your work publicly? Um, I, I don't know. I think, you know, I thought, I think the, my daughter had moved on to school and I had started making these and I thought, you know, I don't know. I, 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 I was, I was proud of them. I was proud of what I was doing. And so I thought, you know, I'd like to share them with people if they were interested in seeing them. And, and that seemed like, you know, at the time, you know, Instagram was, you know, that would seem like the place that it would, would go. And I wasn't really, you know, at that point I had never been on Instagram. So um, it was, you know, that was a, you know, that was a big, a, a big deal. So okay. uh, yeah. And that's where I just felt like, you know, I thought it was something worth sharing. And it was something that people could relate to. And I think there was something that people could latch on to uh, different from the previous project. But I thought if I posted that, like it was it was a little too incoherent. But this had a specific I, and I and I, you know, I've always felt, you know, through the schooling and stuff, history has always been a major um, was major interest of mine, you know, through the schooling process. As I realized, like everything, you know, geography, history, uh, science, history, it's like. We all came, it all came from somewhere. So history was, became kind of, I started to kind of really latch on to history as the kids got older and as I started to teach more and more. So, yeah, um, I'd, yeah. I've known lots of people over the years that also gravitated towards history and I get it and I kind of don't. And I kind of don't in the sense where it's just like, it never appealed to me. It's, it's weird, but I get the enthusiasm that the people I know that enjoy it have for it. Um, mm -hmm. it's just, it's kind of fascinating to me that to uh, the people that are really into it, it's like, they just really like history and then even history documentaries. I can't watch them. I, I don't know why, <laughs> but, but can you guys you watch, really dig them. But you know? can you watch documentaries about like, like, uh, like the Beatles, like the get back yeah, or not really, I never saw, really. I never saw it. Everybody was really into it. And I was one of those guys that just waited for them to finish talking. So I wouldn't have to bring up, I didn't see it. <laughs> So, but I can, I mean, I can watch stuff like that. Uh, I've, I mean, I watched a documentary the other day about the guy that invented the cassette tape, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say what you do with the vintage toys. Right. That's I know. History. And that's all I get history. that. Yeah. It's, I mean, yeah. there's no, there's no this, well, some of them changed history. I mean, the cassette tape actually changed 
lots of things. I don't know. Okay, maybe. All right, I'll take it back. So I don't like scholarly history. Well, no, this stuff can, I mean, heck, the the original iMac is in the Smithsonian now. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I guess this stuff is kind of bleeding into history. All right, I take back everything. Okay, let's just delete that last couple of minutes of conversation. So I don't like revolutionary war in, in, in Caesar and things like that. That's what I don't like. Yeah. And what happened in 1863 at the Battle of wherever? And right when you war. said the Battle of, I stopped listening. <laughs> so maybe that's it. Maybe I just don't like that. Because it's true. I listen to old time radio like constantly. <laughs> I mean, there's... Right. That's all history. Like whether that's it's true. art history or literature, history of literature, history of you know, environmental movement, history of whatever, music. You know, wow. I did a strip on John Cage and like that was fascinating to me to do. And like it's all but it's all where we came from. And I don't know. That stuff's all wow. you just it's a, you just dead poet society the society me. He's <laughs> teaching me that I re- already do love history and I didn't know it. <laughs> I should stand in my chair. Um You're telling <laughs> history over there. <laughs> So, uh, and then, uh, so one more thing I want to ask is, uh, what do you have planned for the future? I mean, you've got this book, we've talked about like, you know, the possibility of, uh, selling it and stuff, but like what projects or plans or things in the future do you kind of like anything you'd like to mention or stuff that you're looking forward to doing or looking forward to trying? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, Mr. Hughes kind of after all the, you know, after all the, after these years is kind of part of me. So I'm, you know, I'll kind of continue on as I, but I, I have I kind of have ideas for some more long form books, oh, uh, some okay. long form sequential art books, um, uh, history related, maybe historical figures, maybe not so, maybe more of like a, a topic or uh, kind of seeing that out to the end, maybe a historical figure or two that I'd like to depict with maybe not Mr. Hugh, but maybe discuss. So, yeah, I, I've got I've got notebooks of ideas and notebooks of Mr. Hughes. So it's just a matter if I live long enough to try to get them all. I'm not short on ideas. It's it's time. That's always the problem. So, um, and I'm lucky. I mean, I just love, I, I, like, I kind of, I feel at home making things. I like, I like, and I've, I never was a writer, but I kind of got into writing a little bit and that's been fun and a learning experience. And so I'd like to try something more long form, I guess, is what to answer your question would okay. be to do something more in depth, more than just four panels where I could really, you know, take a topic kind of and really go with it in detail kind of. Yeah. So that's what that's what I'd like to do other than kind of continuing to to placate Mr. Hugh and his forays through history. <laughs> well, and if people wanted to check out this work, where would you suggest that they go see it? Uh, Mr. Hugh? Uh, is at Mr. Hughes history, uh, on Instagram at Mr. Hughes history. Great. And, uh, I want to thank you so much for talking with me today. I'm glad that we got this chance. Thank you, Tom. It was nice to meet you. Mm-hmm.